Minecraft Bob Ross here. I'm going to show you something uh, on an ongoing project of mine, uh, a roller coaster, a pretty simple roller coaster that I'm building for my six-year-old son. Um, what I want to show you something is useful for any minecart system or roller coaster uh, where you don't mind using command blocks a little bit. This is especially good for, th for builds in creative mode. Um, what I'm going to show you is uh, essentially how to make a uh, an automatic minecart disposal system. Uh, don't you hate it how when you ride a roller coaster or a minecart system in Minecraft and you get to the end of the ride and your minecart, let's grab a minecart here just to create a visual. This would be the beginning of the ride, and you would arrive here at the end, and your minecart's just stuck there, right? You don't want that left there, because the next person who rides up will bump into it. Maybe even get bumped back, or go start going backwards. Uh, if they hit a powered rail soon enough, they might actually start riding in the entire ride backwards. That's no good. And then when you get here, you got to place another one, right? And so what a lot of people are obviously forced to do is to smash this. Uh, sometimes when you do that, you miss and you break something you didn't mean to break. And it's just a pain. I'm going to show you how to avoid that pain. I'm going to show you how to make a mechanism using two command blocks and a little bit of redstone uh, and a little bit of space. And what this will do is it will get rid of the minecart. We'll put a delay on it so that our rider would have plenty of time to, to get off of the minecart before it disappears, right? Uh, and then, uh, obviously, uh, after that, uh, it will immediately appear here in the slot where it needs to be for the next rider. This is pretty cool. It's something I implement on all of my roller coasters, and, uh, and it works great. So I'm excited to share it with you. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do, which I've already done for you for the sake of convenience, is you want to clear out a spot underneath your sort of start stop station for your minecart system or your roller coaster. And it's it's best, it's not necessary, but it's a best practice, I think, to put these beside one another kind of like this. Uh, in some cases, it might even, uh, this I could have made this where it even rides in and ends right here on the very same block set. That's fine too. But as long as they're close to one another, it's fine. Uh, heck, there are ways to do this even if they're not close to one another, uh, but we're going to do it uh, the easy way today. Anyway, once you once you have that, you clear out underneath and you give yourself plenty of space. Uh, what we're going to need space for is for redstone repeaters. We're going to put in a series of those to create a reasonable delay. Uh, so that when the person arrives here at the end, they have a few seconds to hop off before the minecart disappears. Although I would imagine the minecart could probably um, just disappear while they're still in it too. We could test that. Anyway, um, so here we go. Uh, the first thing we want to do uh, after we clear out underneath and clear out an area to work is we want to place a detector rail. I want to place this at a reasonable distance from the end point. I'm thinking, you know, anywhere between five and eight blocks. I think I'm going to put it right here. And this way, when we ride in, what a detector rail does, a handy thing, is when a minecart rides over, whether it has a person in it or not, whenever a minecart rides over that, it will generate a redstone signal. You can make all kinds of things out of this. You can make a bell that that rings when you arrive at your destination. Uh, you could even rig it up so it could start playing music, uh, like jukebox music. There's ways to rig that up with command blocks, for example. You can do all kinds of stuff. You could have it where it opens a door. Uh, it can do all kinds of things. In fact, uh, this current build manipulates that a bit in other places. Uh, I think it's really cool to actually have them hooked up 
uh, to dispensers for uh, fireworks. So you can have a fireworks display on your uh, minecart system as you ride. Anyway, anything, any effect you want with redstone is activated by that as you ride over it with the rail. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, uh, so we have that. The next thing we want to do is sort of locate pinpoint where we put it. We could use F3 to do that. Uh, I'm actually just going to smash through like that. Okay, it's the one right against the wall. Easy enough. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to replace that, of course. But I'm going to go ahead here and designate a block underneath so I know where that is. Okay, we're going to replace it. We're going to test this signal. We're going to make sure this carries the way we want it to. put a dot of redstone underneath it. What that'll do is that'll carry that signal. We're going to test it. We're going to stick a minecart on top of that just to make sure the signal carries. I'm pretty sure it does. But just to show you this baby at work, if you leave a minecart sitting on it, it acts kind of like a, um, like a pressure plate. It'll keep power. It'll keep the signal going, as you can see as long as that's there but as soon as it passes over and it's gone or it's destroyed you can see the signal goes away but it works so we've generated our signal so we're going to build our mechanism here uh, so what we want to do hmm, i want to really just go immediately into our delay now this is something that's cool to know and i should make a, a whole video just dedicated to this actually as I'm doing more redstone stuff with my viewers <sighs> but long story short whenever you put down a redstone repeater it's also a delay right you might know that here's the exact system that it functions by uh, its default setting which is the shortest setting is 0.1 seconds that is one tenth of a second if you right click it once you see it widens there right the two uh, diodes or poles whatever you want to call them now it's set longer it's set to 0.2 seconds twice as much as it was our third setting is 0.3 seconds and our fourth and final and longest setting is 0.4 seconds all right uh, what that means is, if you do a little simple math, 0.4 seconds isn't quite half a second. Half a second is 0.5 seconds, or 5 tenths, one half of a second. If we put another one and we delay it the same, now we have 0.4 plus 0.4, which is, math whizzes, 0.8. It's almost a full second. All we need is 0.2, which is right there. And now we have a full second. So the way you can get your timing down, if you're thinking in terms of seconds, and you don't have to, um, but if you are thinking in terms of seconds, the way you perfect your timing is, is 4, 4, 2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 2, uh, or full setting delay, full setting delay, and then just, just halfway right there, just one click. If you have it set up like that, that represents one second. Now, if you're wanting a huge delay like we are, since we know that this, I'll show you up here, is 0.4, if we multiply 0.4 times 10, you just move that decimal place over, that gives you four seconds. So if I put down 10 of these, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's a four-second delay. Now you don't you don't even have to count from here. You could actually just go the swing it the opposite direction, like that. And then just connect them with redstone at the end like that. And of course, don't forget to set the delays. Now we have an eight second delay. 
And so we just operate in intervals, intervals of four, like so many things in Minecraft. See how that works? Uh, you know, obviously, if we put two more of these just like this and kept this pattern going, we would have an eight second delay and so on and so forth. Excuse me, actually, we would have a 16 second delay. That is an eight second delay. The main thing you want to pay attention to, see how these have arrows on them? That tells you the direction that it goes. So first the signal carries this way, then it carries that way. So if we were to actually count this, what you should have here is about eight seconds. You can time it if you want. Okay. See how that works? 0.4 times 10 is 4. Uh, I'm not good at counting seconds exactly, but I'll try. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My seconds were a little fast. That's 8 seconds. <laughs> okay. Now that we know how that works, let's manipulate that knowledge here. Let's make this baby run. How many seconds is a reasonable amount of time? So, so it's going to take about not even one second for that minecart to pass over this and to hit home base right here, where it parks essentially. So we'll allow one second for that. But then, how much time do we need after that? Hmm. One, two, three, four. I think four seconds. And if you and if you think about this, I think five seconds is plenty of time. So we already have one second here that we made already, right? So let's just keep going. We want ten more of these. So one, two, all of them set to the highest setting. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And again, if we added one more, it wouldn't really matter. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be an exact science for this. This is just an approximation. There are other builds where you want, where you will want things to time out exactly. Um, but in this case, about five seconds is just fine. All right, you know, just just because. Let's give it a let's give it a little bit more time. There, let's just finish this row. That is ample. That's well over five seconds. Now it's about almost six seconds, if not more. Okay, so we're good. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to put in our two command blocks. Now these command blocks are essentially going to function. Uh, well, we could make them function simultaneously. Actually, they can they can run at the same time. Or if for aesthetics purposes you want you want a half second delay before you see it appear in the next slot, then you could do it that way. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make them go at the same time, and that's really simple to do. Our first command block will be here, our second command block will be here, and I'm just going to run it. Actually, if we want to go a little more compact, we could put them here. And one more thing uh, about redstone repeaters. Redstone repeaters also make it where a signal will carry straight down a line without affecting the line beside it, unlike redstone dust, which would cross over with a signal. So, uh, since we're just going to have redstone dust here beside this, it won't interfere with these. The only way that it can activate one of these um, repeaters is if it goes into the end of it. So what I'm going to do is just run this straight over these. That would actually work, but I like to just do the whole job. So we've got power now going to this. Our power system is set up. 
So what's going to happen? And here's something that I like to do. I like to test my blocks by making them talk to me. So I'm going to go say, uh, and let's just say testing block one exclamation because we like punctuation here, right? And here we're going to say testing block two. Differentiate block one will represent the block that will kill the minecart. We'll get to why we use that language in a moment. Block two is the one that will place the new minecart at the start point. So, the redstone signal goes out, and bam, works fine. Now, of course, this works by impulse, so it doesn't matter that that residual redstone signal is still left there because we left the minecart on top of it. It'll go away as soon as the minecart is removed from that space on top of that um, detector rail. All right. So uh, we're looking good. We have everything in place except for our commands. Again, I like to do this to test, just to test the, the blocks and make sure they're getting power and that they have the timing that we want because it's safe and it doesn't really affect anything. Now we want to go ahead and put in our commands. This is where things get interesting and uh, and maybe a little bit tricky. The f actually, um, the first one is the hardest. So here's the thing, and I'll walk you through this just by typing it up manually. The first thing I need to do is I need to get some coordinates. I'm going to write those coordinates down on a, I suggest writing them down on a piece of paper. Uh, I personally, I like index cards when I'm Minecrafting, but it might not hurt to have a Minecraft notebook or even a Word file or something like that. What I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to go, first of all, right here. This is where the minecart's going to be when it gets destroyed. It's going to be right here. If you wanted to play it safe, you could also make a block maybe specifying this area to a uh, command block uh, for this command as well, uh, just in case like the person who gets off of it bumps it back. But that usually, in my in my experience that usually doesn't happen so we're just going to stick with one block for now so assuming this baby ends up right here on this block as it will i'm going to stand here and i'm going to hit f3 our, de our debug screen and i'm going to get our coordinates right here 645 5 107 okay so let's write, let me write those down. Another helpful thing that you can do is you could just hit T and just write it in your chat. So let's say we're going to say kill kill minecart cords or coordinates if you if you want. Oh, let's spell it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And let's say 640. Oh, 645. Paying attention, make sure there's no negatives. There aren't five. 107. Okay. And double checking. Yes. So I made a note of myself just digitally in Minecraft. If you were to be playing Minecraft with me and, uh, you know, in my world, you would see me type all sorts of weird things into chat because I often use chat to take note of things. Um, so we have those coordinates now. Uh, so I'm going to show you the, uh, and it doesn't matter which one of these we do first, but I'm going to do them sort of in, in the order we're thinking about. I'm going to show you the, 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 uh, what we need to type in here to make this work. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say, so we're going to go slash kill. Now that might seem weird. You don't kill a minecart, right? Well, in, in Minecraft, Minecarts are treated not as blocks, but as entities. Therefore, 
uh, we think of entities as being killable, uh, not maybe not destroyable, so to speak. So since this is treated as an entity, we put slash kill. We actually don't have to put slash in a command block. We can just put kill. And then we go at, okay. Uh, that's telling us what we're tar that's telling the, the command block what we're targeting. And we're gonna put E. What that means is um, at entity. Actually, I wonder. Yeah, okay. I think it does like to have the slash, actually. We're going to go at. I'm going to try some kill. Yeah, that's fine. We don't need it. At E. There's also at S, which means current entity. But I personally don't use that. I just use at E. Notice if we hover, this tells us what this does. Yeah, you can kill players with this command, too. But that's not what we're trying to do, by the way. Uh, and that would be me. I'm the nearest player. So we don't want to do that. I'm going to go E, which means all entities. Now, this is why we're going to need to specify some things so all entities in the world aren't killed. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put an open bracket. Okay. What that means when we put that bracket is that we're, we're, we're adding some, some qualifiers to the entities, to the exact entities that we want to kill. Out of all entities, we only want to kill these certain ones. The first thing we want to do is we want to talk about the type of entity. So I'm going to put type, and I'm going to put equals. That's just the way it's typed out. I'm going to put Minecraft colon minecart. As you can see, we have a lot of options. Uh, these data items are um, are comma separated. So we're going to put a comma. Um, unlike when we type a comma in a sentence, we're not going to put a, com a, a space after the comma. We're just going to go straight into our next part. So we've got Minecraft and Minecart. That's the entity type. Uh, so now, at this point, if we were to activate this command as it stands now, it would just destroy all minecarts in the world, but nothing else. We don't want to destroy all minecarts. We only want to destroy a certain one and a certain set of coordinates. Hence, hence, we're going to use those coordinates that we wrote down. Now, I'm going to click Done here, even though we're not literally done. That will save my progress. On that command block. What I want to do now is I want to pull up um, where I wrote down those uh, those numbers 645 5 107. That's the one we're wanting to kill at that location. So let's go back here. Let's go. Uh, so we want to go x equals, or you can cheat and go here, x position x equals 645 okay i think the other one's five we'll double check these these are comma separated by the way y equals five comma z equals 107 i think that's right i'm gonna click done i'm gonna double check is that right 645-5107. We got it. See, we, and another good thing about putting it in here, you can double check your number against the chords that you input. Okay. I like to share little tricks as we go. So, you might think we're done at this point because we have specified the exact location where we're destroying a specific kind of item, or rather killing uh, a specific kind of entity, but we're not there yet. There's one more weird thing we have to do. Uh, this is sort of like the the beginning point of the killing. <laughs> uh, from there, uh, if we just put this in, it would still kill all minecarts. What we have to do is put the distance coordinates, or the distances from these coordinates. And that, of course, uh, as you might imagine, is called D. You could also think of D in this case as meaning diameter. So it is sort of a diameter, or almost more like, I guess, a radius out from this location. So we're going to go into our next thing. This is going to be called uh, D, and then we're going to put X. 
which, as you can see, stands for entities between x, x plus dx. That, that's sort of a more complex way and convoluted way of saying, what's the distance from this x coordinate? Well, that's 0, because I want to specify only x, 645. Uh, now, remember the point I made earlier about how the minecart could be a block off from where it is. And maybe I could put maybe distance x1 here if I wanted. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to specify this one block. Uh, and we're going to go from there. The rest of it's set. We're going to go dy equals okay, 0. And from here it's going to be hard to see because we're running out of space. But it's there. We're going to put comma. And we're going to go dz equals 0. All right, once we do that, there's one more thing it's easy to forget to do. You want to close that bracket. You want to put the closing bracket. And when we do that, notice how everything lit up in a nice bluish color. That means it works. It's a recognizable uh, string of commands in Minecraft. So now we're going to click Done. All right, let's test the first part. Let's see if it works. We're going to put our minecart right there where it belongs. And we're going to activate that, that uh, detector rail. And we should see this one disappear in a moment. We'll see. There it goes. <laughs> and as you can see, testing block two is still occurring. So we know that that'll work and that this block will happen with it. All right, speaking of this block, what does it do? Well, it places the new one. So what we got to do is, this one's a lot easier, by the way. We've got to just figure out these coordinates. We're going to do it the same way we did the other one. We're going to stand right here. We're going to hit F3, and we're going to write down these coordinates. Right here we have, let's see, 643, 5, and 105. 643. Place minecart chords 640 uh, 5 You want to get that just right? Okay. And I'm just going to type that to myself. Okay. And hit F3 to get rid of that blah, blah, blah. Get rid of all that stuff. And we're going to go back here, and what we're going to type this time, uh, this is going to be a summon command. You don't have to put a slash summon, because this is an entity, and you summon entities. Uh, now, what type, what thing are we going to summon? We're going to summon Minecraft uh, Minecart. Okay, cool. Uh, and now what we want to do, and it's guiding us here, is we want to put the position. Uh, so the position, we wrote that down. I'm going to click Done for now so we can double check our numbers. Uh, 643, 5, 105. 643. Oh, look, it's doing it for us. 5, 105. Done. Summon Minecraft Minecart 643 at 6435105. Let's see if that works. And there you have it, my friends. So if we were riding up. Let's view it in its full glory. <laughs> if we were on a minecart, and we are, and we, uh, we get started, yabba dabba do, walk it up, okay? Like Fred Flintstone. We just went over the detector rail. We jump off in a reasonable amount of time, and voila, it's ready to go again, and the old minecart is gone.
So basically it creates the illusion that we moved our minecart from here to there, when really what we did is we destroyed that one or killed that one and created a new one, right? Either way, it works. So now the my final step is pretty easy. Um, doesn't doesn't really matter, but it's worth mentioning. I just want to kind of clean clean this up and and just sort of leave a tiny margin of space down here, but not much because it's just not needed. I've got everything I need here, so I'm just going to close this most of this back up, but leave a little bit of space so I can walk around and do my thing. Now I want to make one more point to you. I'm not going to make make you watch me do all of that by the way but one more quick point it is good to leave some sort of access stairs it can just be crude block stairs that's fine um, you want to leave some kind of access to these mechanisms um, because you never know uh, when you might need to make an adjustment or check on it or something like that for example um, recently, Minecraft changed the way that its commands and thus its command blocks work or the way some of those strings are, t are, are spelled and typed out. Uh, so it could be that when things change in Minecraft, you have to go back and adjust your codes a little bit, right? <laughs> At which point, this video you're watching now might be obsolete. Uh, anyway, um, when that happens, uh, it's good to know where your stuff is and how to get to it uh, instead of just covering it all up. At the same time, I think it's a good idea to be a bit discreet about it and to, to not make a huge gap in the ground where it's hard to get to it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here for now is just leave kind of a little, uh, a little hallway of sorts right there. I'm going to make it very minimal. Eh, if I want to be really cool, I might even replace that so that all you see is the grass down there blended in as much as possible. Yeah, kind of like that. And then right here we're not even worried about. That grass will eventually turn to regular dirt. Maybe leave a little margin. Here's another little thing that I like to do sometimes for what it's worth. Take any kind of glow type block. Of course, you could throw torches down here if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, personally, I kind of like uh, maybe, I don't know, sea lantern block. Uh, that works pretty well. And what you can do is maybe smash out some of the floor and throw in some sea lantern. This is a flat world, which means there's not much room to work uh, in terms of um, the things you build, obviously. I'm smashing the bedrock to make this happen in creative mode. Yeah, that gives us a little bit of light, and it's not intrusive. So if we do need to come down here and check things out, it's pretty easy to do. And there it is. Um, obviously, we put uh, this over here just to illustrate a point. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up real quick because I just have to do it right now. I am monkish like that when it comes to Minecraft. Uh, so it works. There it is. And as you can see, there's very little indication that we've done anything at all to change the natural landscape. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's invisible. The only real thing that we can see is maybe some crude stairs going down there and a, uh, a, you know, a detector rail right there at the end. That's it. Anyway, uh, I know this has been a somewhat uh, long little tutorial. I wanted to walk you through those steps and, uh, and just make sure that you knew how to do these. I have, I have one suggestion as I close. Um, and if you watch a lot of YouTube tutorials, you probably know this already, but it's something I do when I watch others tutorials, when I'm trying to figure out how to do something I don't know how to do. Um, back when we were talking about like formulas and what to input, like how to, you know, the commands to put into the uh, command blocks. Um, if you want to 
uh, see what those are, you might just rewind to those points on the video and just pause uh, when you go to, to input those, right? Don't forget to do that. That's a nice YouTube tutorial trick. Anyway, uh, this has been, um, well, what should I call it? This has been Minecart Disposal 101. <laughs> and I, of course, am Minecraft Bob Ross, your favorite chilled out YouTube Minecrafting guy. Uh, until next time, as always, my friends, I wish you the best. And as always, I wish you happy Minecrafting and happy Minecarting.